141 of The Knitting Samurai and Her Guys. I'm your host, Steph, also known as The Knitting Samurai. And I'm wearing an FO. <laughs> it's been a while since I finished the 2010 Cardigan by, oh, I don't remember. Verbach Millie, maybe? I, I'm not sure. I'll put it in the show notes and I'll put it across the bottom. But um, yeah, so I finished this. Let's see if you could get a view. And I was working on it, I want to say back in April, and I was very um, surprised after losing 25 pounds that it appeared to still fit me. So last night I sewed on all the buttons, hasn't been blocked, and I've got a good uh, four inches <laughs> extra on this thing. It's, it's very roomy. We have lots of positive ease, but I love how the collar came out and I would definitely knit it again. Um, it's super warm. I'm sweating. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, what yarn did I use? This is a Valley Yarns. I don't remember. <laughs> if you're interested, you can look in the show notes, but I do remember that it took no time at all to knit this sweat. So uh, that just wanted to share that with you. I had a little um, button sewing party last night and I replaced the buttons on one sweater. They were, um, the finish was coming off, so they got new buttons. And then um, two sweaters I had finished knitting, I sewed the buttons on. So I got three sweaters last night effectively. So that was very nice. And I can't wait to wear them. This I think will be for going out and about, kind of more like a jacket. On the weekends until it gets um, too cold and I actually need to wear a big heavy jacket. So wanted to share that with you. Uh, what's been going on with you? I know it's been a really long time since we talked and I am sorry about that and you know it's a bit crazy for me right now. Um, just if I launch into chatter first you'll forgive me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think I had told you that I was up for two promotions at work and it was a really crazy hectic time. Yeah, um, even though I would like to paint life as a beautiful, happy portrait and nothing ever goes wrong, things went wrong. <laughs> I had six or seven interviews for the two jobs. I did great at all my interviews, but as the more I talked to people, the more nervous about those jobs I got. Um, because they're substantial steps up for me. And by the end of the week, I had a panic attack. I've never had a panic attack before. I really didn't do so well at my current job for the week and I just got overwhelmed and a bit scared. And so I ended up pulling my name and saying, you know what, someday I'd like those jobs. I learned lots of things about what I need to do to be prepared to do those jobs and the amount of time commitment that goes along with those jobs. And I, you know, rose right over there. And my little ones are more important to me right now than making the big money and being um, in a greater position of authority that I'm currently in. So I'm just going to stay in my little job that I have had for, I think I've been in it two and a half years, and almost three years. And I really like it. I enjoy what I do. There's no reason to change, you know. It was a it was a great opportunity, learned a lot, but not something I'm gonna go for. So I pulled my name, <laughs> which, you know, I work in a corporate environment. Who knows if that's going to have long term repercussions for me, or if it'll be thought respected as a decision. But um, yeah, so I did that. Hi, Linus. Hi, baby. And. You guys haven't seen Linus in forever, I think, huh? Yeah, so that happened, but that had, it, um, I had one whole night where I didn't sleep. I didn't knit for a week. It, I was a wreck by the end of the week. Um, and there were other things going on besides just interviews, because, you know, I can interview. I can talk to people, that's fine. But um, yeah, so it made for a crazy week and exhaustion and you know I ended up having to take a sleeping pill a couple nights just to get me to catch up on my sleep because I was just so far behind and just a wreck as I said so and that hell week <laughs> ended on Friday of Rhinebeck okay I'll try and keep my voice down <laughs> and so 
<clears throat> that Friday I rushed home with the boys and said, all right, I'm just going to try and tune out everything in life and enjoy my one little getaway, uh, my yarn adventure for the year. And so <clears throat> I speedily packed us up and then we headed to um, Steve's aunt and uncle in Western Mass. It was about, I want to say it's almost a two hour drive. No, it's almost a three hour drive to there. So we went there. My parents had gone earlier in the day. They brought their motor all together. You know, uh, Uncle Ken and Aunt Laura are really like, I don't normally call them that. I'm just calling them that for the little ears. Um, they really are like a third set of grandparents and they're just wonderful, caring, generous people. So we had a good time with them. And then Saturday morning, I had us all on a schedule and said, okay, everybody gets five minutes in the bathroom and then we're in the car. <laughs> and it was a joke, but not really. <laughs> Because it was another hour and 45 minute drive to uh, run back from their house. So we took off almost just a little before eight o'clock. Steve forgot the tickets. We all had to circle back. We had two cars. Um, and the, of course, the scenery is gorgeous. I wanted to record for you, but it didn't work out that way that, you know, I just, it wasn't that kind of trip. Um, and honestly, I was brain dead and I just needed to relax and enjoy something um, relaxing, soothing, calming for me. So that's what I did. Sorry. <laughs> and we had a great family adventure. It wasn't the Rhinebeck trip of my youth. Of <laughs> We counted. This was my sixth Rhinebeck I've been to. I started going in, I think, 2008 was the first year I went. And... This was very different from that. So this was a family trip, you know, there were eight of us. Yeah, eight of us all together, going here, going there, um, looking at the animals, very animal centric. And then in the past, you know, it's about consumption. It's about, you know, stocking up on all of those great vendors that you can't get to normally. So, um, and, and of course, of course, 50% uh, of it is the social aspect. So you know, meeting all your Rav friends and your podcast buddies and going to the podcaster meetup. I didn't do that this year, which um, I regret a little bit, a little bit because um, there are so many people there that I didn't get to see. And it makes me a little bit sad, but I didn't, I, the, the guys took the boys <laughs> and um, I don't know what they did. Oh, they did the dog stuff. And so I had mom and Laura, Aunt Laura with me and during that amount of time, like an hour, hour and a half that I had, I didn't want to spend it. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to hit Babs and Into the World and Loop and see, see the exhibit halls, A, B, and C, that I knew were too crowded to get the family through. And so, and that's really ultimately, well, not really, but <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I, I, I'm very sorry I didn't get to see more of you. So um, next year, I think more of the family will be coming just because everyone enjoyed the scenery and the food and just the experience overall. Um, I think Steve's cousin's going to come too. So I'll have to revisit how this works out <laughs> because I do want to go to the podcaster meetup. And you know what? Next year, I'll have a five and a two-year-old and maybe... They stay with the grandparents and I say, okay, I'm doing my own thing today. Everybody can come with me, but I'm breaking off. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, Linus is getting old. I don't know if you could tell his um, waves are not nearly what they once were when I started podcasting, but he's still curly a little bit, a little bit. And he's my buddy. So um, I also... <laughs> So in years past, Rhinebeck has been this huge gluttony event, right? Where, you know, I would buy two years worth of yarn, like crazy amounts of yarn. And I went there um, with a budget, which I've, never, I've done, but I always go over. Um, so I went with a budget and I went very cognizant of the fact that one of my missions for the year is to have less yarn than I had at the start of the year. And I'm serious about it. I'm serious. So do I need this yarn? No. Is the, um, I'm thinking about socks that rock in particular. Yes, it was absolutely gorgeous. I wanted to buy all of the medium weight as I always do. But you know what? I have probably six or eight skeins in my stash that have been there for 
three years and I haven't knit them. So no, I don't need that. So I had things in mind that I wanted to pick up and I picked those up and that was it. So, um, yeah, it was a good adventure. So we're going to see what I got. I know this is totally out of order, but it's the way we're free flowing. It's the way I feel like going today. So, um, I stopped at Gail's art and I had a nice visit with her and I said, okay, Gail, I need, uh, graffiti and asphalt because everybody and the brother has knit with this and I loved it and I love it. And she gave me the last skein. I was so excited that I didn't even read the content. I'm looking at it right now as I touch it and it's BFL. I don't like BFL. Oh, what's on my arm? Hmm, something brown on my arm. <laughs> so I'll have to figure out something to do with this. Maybe I'll make socks, but graffiti and asphalt. I, you know, you love that color, that splatter technique. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I her smashed pumpkin is her other color that I'm just like, oh, they blow my mind. I think they're beautiful. So that one. And then I was standing there visiting with Gail. She's such a nice lady. We had, um, at the first SSK, we had a good opportunity to talk and it was nice to see her again because it's been three years since I've seen her. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> everything is based on Roland's age. Isn't that funny? Is that how everyone else keeps track of time? By, based on the child but anyways um so while we were talking I we were talking about her sock life club which is all the rage right and I she had this one left I asked her to show me her sock blanks and this was the one that she had left and I instantly loved it I think this is going to make a beautiful pair of Christmas stockings so I've been holding off until I show it to you and take a picture for Rav of it pre-knitting and then I'm going to jump into it. It has all these gorgeous stencils. I can't wait. Can't wait. And I know they're going to be fraternal socks, but it looks like, yep. Looks like there are actually four color repeats on this. If I look at it right, I don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What it that was one purchase. And then I only made one other purchase. I know I fought the crowds. I, you know, left mom and Laura at the windows and they were people um, as two non knitters mom and Laura were so funny the way that they were people watching and just odd um, I, mom saw a I think it was a green shawl or maybe it was a green vest bless you honey she saw something that um, she was in awe of and so she came up to me and was like Steph oh my god did you see that and I, and I hadn't seen it and I was like mom it is completely acceptable here to go up to someone tell them you love what they're wearing no thank you and ask them the name of the pattern so that your daughter can knit it for you and so then she was like on alert but then she didn't see anything that like wowed her as much as that original shawl had but um yeah so they loved the sheep hats they were everywhere everyone had one on I think it's a Susan B Anderson pattern um I'm not sure, but they were just like, what, 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 what? <laughs> like, there's a thing when you come to Rhinebeck, sometimes that pattern takes off and that's the pattern for the year. I would say that was definitely this year's pattern. Um, yeah, they're just, they were so funny at their reactions to things and um, they were adorable. Anyway, so I left them at the window, people watching and, uh, or up against the wall. And I went into Babs, Miss Babs booth. And uh, that's always, you know, that's one of the things I love about Rhinebeck. It, you can go into these super ultra crowded booths so that you've got people's elbows into your ribs and like you're jammed in there. And you could be like, oh my God, this is miserable. Or, or you can make it into a experience of fun and it's, start joking with those people. You don't know. I don't know, but they're there for the same reason you're there and we're all knitters or mostly knitters. And so I had a really good time <laughs> just handing things back and forth to people and, oh, grab that color. Oh, show me that one. You know, oh yes, you should totally get that. You know, you, you make it what it, what you want it to be. And so I enjoyed being crowded in there with my fellow knitters. Um, <laughs> and I got a few things. I actually, at one point, I think I had six or eight skeins of yowza on my arm because I wanted to get a sweater's worth of yowza and I couldn't bring myself to do because I know that I wear a tonal sweater a lot more often or a um, commercially dyed single color sweater I will wear that more than I will wear highly variegated sweater although I fixed my button so I'm going to start wearing my harvest moon 
which is uh, a Yauza. What, what color was it? I don't remember. But anyways, um, I'm going to start wearing that more. But I, so I, I had it in my mind that I needed to buy a semi-solid tonal variegated, not variegated yarn. But looking at the walls and walls or bays and bays of Yauza, it's really hard not to gravitate towards those super stunning colors. And so I did. Which I'm sure you, what babe, what? Over. Over. Do you want to watch another one? Okay, go for it. <laughs> you don't want to put me. I have shark claws, right? You have shark claws? Oh no. Pokey. Pokey shark claws. Okay. Hey, I think we have Yeah. All right. Are you going to go watch why, another one, honey? Why don't you move it? Oh, because I moved it so that the mirror wouldn't reflect onto the camera. So that the light wouldn't hurt their eyes. Go watch another one, honey. Okay. Okay. So I got the skein of zombie prom and one is not enough. So I got two. So, <laughs> um, this one is definitely more of a black now that I'm looking at them. And this is more of the purple uh, magenta color, but I'm going to do something with it. And I was also thinking because I do probably have three sweaters worth of Yaza in the, in the bins that I've been hoarding. I'm thinking that if I bring these in, I can replace, I can swap out and actually knit with one I have instead of just sitting on it. So that was my thought there. So I did buy those. And then that's, that was the highlight guys. The only other thing I bought were some minis. So, um, the, and these are gorgeous colors. So this is a mini of two ply fingering. They're all two ply. Oh no, yummy, 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 <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. So this one is um, a Spread Your Wings, which is a beautiful color. I would buy a full scan of that in a heartbeat. This one is Black Wash, which really is a very dark teal color, like totally my palette. And this one is Zombie Reunion. So they are, how many yards each? 100% merino, 133 yards. So 400 yards right there. And the three of these and I don't know like they definitely uh, coordinate if I want to these two coordinate better than that one but they uh, coordinate in case I wanted to do some color work or if I just want to put them in a blanket but I feel like for 30 bucks I should do a color work shawl with this so that's what I bought that was it for my neck purchases Linus cannot get enough attention today huh so, I, I bought some things, but I didn't go crazy. Like, seriously, that's three quarters of a mile. Because <laughs> that's how I'm thinking about everything now. So, um, it was a good day. It was a good day. And then we drove home, and we had delicious pizza that night. And just sat up late talking and laughing. And I was, it was just what I needed. So, that was great. Um... And that's my right neck. So you want to talk about what I'm working on? I have three projects to share with you. So the first, I know you can guess, is an Anders. Uh, this is Roland's, so I did not finish it for my neck. So Tristan didn't wear his. I just, I felt odd about it. Tristan um, wore one of the garter hats. He actually wore Roland's. He wore a garter hat that I knit for him and the vivid blanket that matches it. So he was all, he was wrapped in the stroller in that. And I saw Boston Jen. It was great to see her. And I saw Jackie Nitz. Hey, Jackie. I see her every, every year. Um, oh, what else did I see? Knit, wit, one, two, three, I think. We had lunch together. It was nice to see you. Um, definitely. Oh, and I saw Megan of Stack It at Salvi's, which kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> but I did it. And she met the whole family along with... I rock knits, Corey. So anyways, some Instagram friends. It was great to see people that I did see. I wish I had seen. Um, bookish Stitcher, I'm looking at you and Sheila. I felt bad, I miss both of you. But it's okay, next year. We'll kind of next year. So this is the Anders sweater. Um, and the body's done. I'm working down the sleeve. 
I've done, what, what is that? Four inches since you last saw it. So working on that. The I'm using Leading Men Fiber Arts and Dramaturg and Nude Seed and Dames at Sea. So there's that one. Hello. I am also working on a baby gift for a friend. And this one I'm using Louette Gems in the bright blue colorway. Bright blue that I got at Webs a couple weeks ago. And which is, it's a sport weight, but it definitely is chunkier than the Leading Men Fiber Arts Callback, which is what I'm using for the cream color. Um, I love the way the Louette feels. So I knit this on US fours. It's very squishy, very nice on the fours. Um, and then going up to sixes for the color work portion. So I'm just, just at the top of the trees on this. And I am knitting this one in the six to 12 month size, if I remember right, the second size of the pattern. And then Roland's, I used the charts um, from the pattern, but I did follow the measurements of the flax pattern by Tin Can Knits. So those are on the needles and going. I love the color work. I, I can't seem to stop. So I'm going to, here's my plan. I'm going to force a No More Anders sweaters knit, knitting, and I'm going to work on the color work mittens, cold as fun, that um, I talked about probably two months ago that I wanted to knit for myself. I'm going to work on those next. Um, and when those are finished, if I still want to knit more Anders sweaters, then I'll knit another one. But I'm going to take a break. Try, anyways. And then I pulled out a UFO. I know. And I think I talked about it last time, but I was working on the sleeves. So it's all, all the pieces on my Providence Baby Cardigan by Cicely Glowick McDonald are knit. They've been knit. They've been walked. Uh, but they haven't been assembled. So I knit the sleeves in the round. Even though the pattern called for knitting in the flat, I thought they'd go faster that way. And I'm sure they did. But it made setting them in a little bit more challenging. But um, my seams look pretty good. Pretty good. So I just did this side last night. Um, <clears throat> and you can see, well, maybe you can't. I don't know. Maybe if I hold it over. I don't know. Anyways, there's a little lace detail at the front panel. So I sewed one side together. I need to sew the other side. Set in the other sleeve. I think I might just sew the shoulder seam. Um, I have my yarn already on the needle and it's in here. Yeah, right here. <laughs> Ready to go. I just need to sew that shoulder seam and then um, there's an I-cord edging that goes around the neck and a seed stitch, stitch border down the front. So I need to do those pieces and then it will be done and I will have fewer UFOs <laughs> or fewer yeah, UFOs than I had in January, which was also one of my goals. So there you go. That's what's going on. Oh, and this yarn is Barocco Vintage Banana Color 522, I think. I would just take my word for it that that's what it is. I had to go excavating to find another skein of it, but I ha I found it, I found it. I spent probably, oh, there we go, color 5122, I was close. Um, yeah, yarn bins, they take over my life. So that's what I'm working on, that's the show. It's a little longer than usual, I'm surprised. Um, yeah, some variety coming in the future and hopefully life will return to a more moderate pace. It did this past week. It was um, a bit better at work. So hopefully that'll continue. We have Halloween next Friday night. And then Saturday, Steve and I are heading to New York City <laughs> for the New York Marathon. He's running. Go him. This will be his second marathon. And I intend to, he, we picked a really nice, um, really nice by my standards, hotel that has a nice sports bar in it and then a rooftop pool, heated indoor pool that's just like glass on all the sides. So I plan to spend the four hours or so while he's running, not out in the crowds, but 
sitting by the pool or in the bar or in the room knitting and enjoying life. So I expect that that's where I will record next. And um, until then, I hope you have a great seven days or so. <laughs> Take care and enjoy your knitting. Bye.